I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. It was a trip Linda Smith had taken many times with her sister, a Metro North train ride into New York City. Now Linda must live with the memory of being on board the train that derailed in the Bronx Sunday morning, killing four people, including her sister Donna, who was sitting next to her. And from the living room of her New Windsor home, two days after the deadly derailment, Linda Smith shared her experience on board the first car. Moments before and moments after the speeding train tumbled from the track. It was bumpy and just seemed really, at that point, I was aware of going very fast. Mm -hmm. um, and then felt the sensation of being tilted sideways and just bouncing up and down and up and down. I was kind of still in the seat, mm -hmm. but I was kind of sideways, like in the corner and the seat cushions were on top of me. Mm -hmm. On like, I kind of may have been even like this and there, and there was situated that I couldn't get the seat cushion off of me. Investigators say the train was going 82 miles an hour in a 30 mile zone at the time it derailed. Linda Smith was removed from the wreckage by emergency responders. Funeral services for Donna Smith will be held Friday morning at Brooks Funeral Home in Newburgh. Those boarding Metro North trains at the Poughkeepsie station this morning found service had returned to near normal in the wake of Sunday's fatal train derailment at Spite and Dival in the Bronx. Spokesman for the rail line said this morning service was running at about 98%. This after crews had to rebuild about 800 feet of track that was ripped up at the crash site where one of three tracks is now operational. MTA officials credit the round-the-clock round cleanup and repair work for the quick resumption of service. About 3,500 of the Hudson Line's 18,000 morning rush hour passengers board at Poughkeepsie and at uh, Dutchess County's two additional stations. As for the crash, investigators are reportedly focusing on the actions of the engineer just prior to the high-speed derailment. Monticello Mayor Gordon Jenkins will continue to serve as village manager following a failed attempt last night to oust him from that position. The village board voted 3-2 to two not to remove Jenkins from the city manager post during its meeting last night. Jenkins read a prepared statement at the meeting apologizing for obscenities and the, quote, manner in which I express my outrage and anger, end quote. Video of the mayor's racially charged and expletive-filled rant and his actions following his recent arrest for DWI made national news and raised calls for his resignation. Jenkins maintains the police department has made him a target of selective enforcement and he continues to reject calls for him to step down. Three and a half to 14 years. That was the prison sentence handed down today in Orange County Court to Kevin Conklin, the 24-year-old town of Walkill man who had pleaded guilty to a second-degree manslaughter charge in connection to the death of 46-year-old Middletown resident Alan Cardona outside a Middletown bar back in November of 2012. Cardona died from a heart attack triggered by the head trauma suffered after getting punched and kicked by Conklin outside G's Westgate Bar. Conklin was initially charged with first-degree manslaughter, but agreed to plead guilty to the lesser second-degree manslaughter count. State police say she would steal jewelry and other property from the homes where she was working as a house cleaner. Now 33-year-old Novia LaGrave and her boyfriend, 24-year-old Robert Brownell, both, uh, both of them residents of the Ulster County community of Milton, have been arrested for criminal possession of stolen property. Police say the homes that uh, were hit are in Rensselaer County. Brownell uh, faces additional charges of tampering with evidence and resisting arrest. Police say the couple had uh, some of the stolen property in their possession at the time of their arrests, but uh, other stolen uh, goods had already been pawned at local pawn shops. The company that runs a temporary asphalt plant for Stewart Airport in the town of New Windsor has been in the process of addressing a series of violations cited by the state DEC. The plant operator, Joint Lime, was ordered to remove asphalt sediment from a tributary of Beaver Dam Lake and Moodna Creek and then deal with an assortment of other stormwater and record-keeping violations. The plant has been up and running since July and is likely to stay in operation for another year and a half. 
Asphalt produced there is used to repave Stewart Airport runways. The environmental group Spark had uh, filed a lawsuit against the operation, claiming at the time the town allowed uh, the temporary plant to be built without proper approvals. It'll get colder by the weekend, but in the meantime, some mild but rainy weather will be with us. Thursday will be cloudy with a chance of a passing shower, and the highs will be up around 60 degrees. Friday will be cloudy with periods of rain likely, with temperatures topping out at or near 50 degrees. Get an edge on the day by starting it with the Times-Herald Record, and breaking news is just a click away right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.